Um, uh, obviously, we, we're going to be very quick. All the talks this evening are very quick. Um, I'm going to introduce the project to you, and then I'm going to hand over to Diego for the multimedia presentation. Um, and uh, so we're here to talk about making this evening, and it's a good topic because Diego is a visual artist. I'm a writer. We've never made a film before, either separately or together, but we hazard we hazarded to do so this summer. So we're going to show you a little bit of, of the results. Um, so next stop, Steven Spielberg and Hollywood Blockbuster, <laughs> obviously. Um, uh, the, the premise of the film is a rather serious one, but the enactment is very simple, and perhaps almost there's an element of comic uh, gesture to it. The premise of the film is to retrace the last journey taken by Walter Benjamin, who uh, many of you may know was a German, Jewish, intellectual, philosopher, critic, all-round genius who died prematurely at the age of 48. Uh, not quite at the hands of the Nazis, but fleeing the Nazis, so that's going to come into the picture. Um, in order to reenact his last journey, it's quite simple, you just need to walk over the Pyrenees. Um, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, the, the route that we took is the exact route that he took. It's an old smuggler's route, but it was also the route that about three, a huge number, I, I think about 200,000 people took during the Spanish Civil War in the other direction, from Spain to France. And then after the Nazis overran France very quickly in 1940, 1941, it was pretty much the only way out of France. They closed uh, all sort of apertures to France very quickly. So that is how Benjamin and many others escaped. Um, so that's the basic premise. The other thing that I have to tell you about the film, the sort of background, is that we've both spent a lot of time in Catalonia together. Catalonia, as you say in English, but northern Spain, um, for various reasons. And we've been together through this town called Port Beau, which is a border town. It's the last stop on the line. And we were always, frankly, completely spooked out by Port Beau, uh, individually and together. It's a very sort of charged, sinister place. Um, and you, we, we didn't actually film the town, but that was the place where Walter Benjamin died. And I thought, how bizarre to die in this authoritarian, rather fascist, claustrophobic place, um, this, this great mind of, of, of considerable finesse. Um, a colleague of mine at UVA, where I teach, Lindsay Stonebridge, who's an expert on statelessness, did this walk. Um, before us, and she said to us, she said, in order to understand what these people went through, and especially Benjamin, who had a heart condition and was generally in terrible shape, you have to do the walk yourself. Um, so uh, we thought, how hard can it be? It's 20 kilometers, uh, it's a relatively well-worn path, but the answer is it was actually a lot harder than we were anticipating physically. Um, the other thing was how to, bring this, how to bring it alive, how to make it filmic. Um, we rehearsed that concept a little bit the summer before, where we had a big image of Walter Benjamin, which we ended up taking with us everywhere. It was the image on his passport when he died. In fact, he didn't have a passport. He had a laissez passe um, issued by the, by the Red Cross. A very handsome photo of actually a very handsome man. He, he, was, he was a looker um, when he was younger. So we took Walter with us everywhere. We would go out into remote coves in the boat. We'd walk up the mountain. We'd roll out Walter. We'd photograph him in the landscape we roll him back. He ate lunch with us on our terrace. So, you know, Walter became part of the family. And and this is in you'll see in a moment, this is this is what we did. We took Walter with us over the mountains. Um, we decided without even really deciding it, I think this is how a lot of things get done in films, you have no idea what you're doing, uh, that I would be Walter because the sort of incongruity or anomaly of having a woman being Walter, as you'll see, being Walter pretty badly, but you can see that it's, it doesn't, it's less literal, I guess, than, than having a man do it. The film itself took about eight to ten hours to make. We were on the mountain all that time, and we were doing multiple takes, so I actually must have walked, I don't know, 30 kilometers at least, um, a lot more than anybody else, because I had to do a lot of backing and forthing. Um, and as you can see, the idea is that he emerges, he emerges out of the landscape. Um, and ultimately, I won't analyze it because that's Diego's job. He's going to show you a couple of minutes of film and then he's going to analyze it. But um, you'll see, I guess, that it's metaphorically and literally a kind of very simplistic but hopefully quite poignant resurrection. Okay. Uh, what we will, thank you, Jim. Uh, what we will see now it is an aspect of the film. This is the very beginning. 
tell me the angle should be. This is just setting the scene. A little uh, quote from Benjamin's history of photography. That's a Banyol Sumer in southern France. On September 25th, 1940, a man and a woman left the small village of Puy de Mars, one kilometer from Banyol Sumer in southern France. It was late afternoon. They were dressed like vineyard workers. It was the height of the bandage, the grape harvest. The fields were scattered with workers who would start very early at 6 a.m. making grapes. He was always unlucky. He was clumsy. He would arrive at someone's house at the worst possible moment. He had no idea of how to live in the real world. Okay. Okay. That's it. Over to you, Dean. So the film, it is five minutes. It's very short. After this uh, collaboration with Chin and also a filmmaker um, from Barcelona, um, we I start questioning as part of a different program which I was invited to participate, which it was charting the invisible. How to reinterpret the text of uh, Walton Benjamin into the fabric of society. So I invite um, a photographer from Holland to work with me in um, Porbo, in the town which uh, Walton Benjamin did live for just uh, 12 hours. So. Then, uh, what the key thing it was, okay, uh, let's, let's bring a performance. Let's make the, the, the fabric of the society to participate on the thoughts evolving from the writing of Walter Benjamin. And the device, it was very simple. I'm going to just uh, <clears throat> you know, show you, but also there is a series of images which I could show you too. if we have the time. So what I did it is from the text on the work of art on an age of mechanical reproduction, uh, take words and write them, rewrite them on these uh, papers and then go into the fabric of this little town which is very claustrophobic as Jean mentioned. It is just as a kind of um, end uh, mountain from right, left, and then the Mediterranean Sea, and it had a colossal kind of uh, architectonic presence because it was the entrance from Europe into Spain. But that creates a very uh, enclosed little town. So I start working on, this, on the streets and mentioning to the people uh, from this town that what we were doing and if they wanted to participate in this um, photographic project which was disseminating the concepts of Walter Benjamins into the tissue of the modern uh, society. That was taking place also in Barcelona, in uh, Berlin, in London and also in um, Tadlin. I was invited as an artist residency to end in Tadlin, which is a very interesting border ta city uh, between the old communist uh, you know, system and the European, uh, and, and let's say Europe. So what you see it is this, this is people from uh, Porbo, which they live there for many years. He will remember. Uh, the history of Walter Benjamin, but he will not have an idea what Walter Benjamin did in terms of philosophical, uh, uh, kind of lit philosophical and literary uh, input into human thinking. Um, then we went to the station, the train station, uh, and invite people from France, from Spain, travelers to participate. Again, mentioning it was Walter Benjamin. Surprising enough, many people they did know mm -hmm. Walter Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Other people, they were kind of unknown, but you know, very cool young Love generation. <laughs> you will don't know, but he said that is cool. That sounds great. You know, let's make it happen. Uh, let's see. 
that that is a very interesting. The situation she uh, she first said no, and later on said, "Did you mention Walton Benjamin?" I say yes. So yes, then I will participate. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting. And she chose this word, so I would just give it a choice, and they will cho choose the ones they think it makes sense to them. So that is the third level of this project. What happens when we um, deconstruct a text? and we use words evolving from the author and give it to audience to hold. Well, that in many, that is London, in many ways those words are still uh, <coughs> performing a meaning within the, con in the whole context of the, uh, of the text, but outside of the text it brings a different meaning. A meaning which is more related with the singularity of the moment, the singularity of the person, and how that person relates with that word. So that is a kind of interesting uh, relation between the enclosure of philosophy and the opening up of philosophy through a performative act, which in, is enacted through interacting with the uh, population and with people, but also interacting with photography, which is in itself uh, what Walter Benjamin brought to us to think about it in an age of mechanical reproduction, which nowadays we are so embedded. And now then, nowadays is his prophecy the one we are live, embracing and living. So that, as part of um, as part of this event, this body of work is is, is carrying working. So it's carrying in it's, it's development. It's, it's traveling. traveling. Yeah. So I will invite uh, those who they want to choose a word and hold them, and I will take a photograph, which later on, this photograph will be part of this project. Uh, this project, there is key cities, Berlin, London, Barcelona, um, Tatlin, as I mentioned, and we want to work, or I, at least I want to work for the coming two years, and doing workshops, integrating the text into the everyday, not as a philosophical um, <coughs> statement of embracing knowledge, but be becoming to understand words and their meanings uh, on the hands of individuals. A little bit what you do. Uh, which is working with text and then breaking those into a singular uh, representation of what that student or individual is working with you may take that meaning. So, more than a sign. Uh, That's the title of the film, more than a sign, as in more than the sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think maybe now I have explained uh, the contextual body, uh, body of work. And I will invite you to, to, to hold one if you want. Uh, yes? But oh, you'll do the photography later, is that right? You can choose the <coughs> simple one. The concept of aura. Can I have yes. authority of objects? Yes, for sure. <laughs> okay, there is a series of them. Which one would you like from these two? Like Ma yeah. Yes, that is yeah, part like of the film. It's a lovely one. Uh, <laughs> accepting its reproduction. So we, we must. I'll take factorial reproduction. If that's that, yes. <laughs> yes. Can I take the perception one, please? Yes, for sure. It's all about perception, life. Life as it was. Yes. Can I take accepting this, its reproduction? Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Yes. Perhaps I'll let you move to the back, dear. Yes. Put some people there. Social houses. That's great. Yes. Let's go for that one. 